Hello everyone, I'm Barbara Nitez, Library Assistant here at the Seeking Public Library, and I'm here today with TLU students from Dr. Shao's computer classes at TLU here locally, and they've agreed to join us for some virtual technology classes for our community, and they're going to be sharing today with us um, some computer basics. Hello everyone, my name is uh, Dr. Roderick Shao, I'm from TLU, and uh, my area is information technology, and this is one of the classes that uh, I am teaching, which uh, is about uh, information, part of information systems. Uh, and they learn about um, a little bit about computers as well as applications. So I'm now joined with um, uh, two of my students, uh, Brandon and uh, Brayden. Uh, thanks for being here. And uh, they have prepared uh, a great presentation that is uh, recorded, which is going to be shared with the community members. Um, but for today, uh, also we have another slide. We're going to run together and talk about computer basics and engage with the community members. You are welcome to ask questions anytime and we'll try our level best to share with you our knowledge and skills. And we think that it's always uh, important to start from the scratch, understanding the basics of computer and uh, how things work and so forth. Computer Basics 1, of course, presented by me, also uh, supported by my students today. And uh, would like also to thank uh, the Seguin Public Library for giving us the time to engage with our community members uh, in sharing this uh, important knowledge. Um, let's move on to slide number two is uh, introduction to computer. And uh, here are the objectives that I would like to cover with you for lesson one. Uh, we want to describe the importance of computers uh, in today's uh, world and also identify the main parts of a computer uh, and then identify the steps for even studying a computer for that case, identify uh, different groups of keys on a keyboard and performing different tasks using a mouse. So this is just a lesson one, very, very basic introductory to knowing what computers are. Uh, as you can see here, this is lesson one. So we have a number of lessons which are going to be uh, delivered uh, and covered uh, uh, by my students. So you're welcome to find out more of those lessons and probably have more interest in these lessons will be great. This is just an intro. Now, what is the role of computers? I wish um, you know I could uh, ask you the question that what do you use computer for? And it's quite interesting to hear back from community members or even individuals why they need computers and uh, why we have so much interest in computers and so forth. It's, it seems like a very easy question, but it's also a very important question to understand how people use computers as individuals or as business, as an institution and so forth. So you can see here the role of computers, uh, pretty much you can use it for if you have your own personal business, it definitely you're gonna find that you need a computer to help you out running your business. Um, for those who are interested in publications, yes, computers are very handy. In education, as you're working on your maybe assignment, as you're working on your research and so forth, computers are the tools to use. And of course, in the government institutions, uh, in many of the government offices you go, they're using computers in the media, in science, in entertainment. So computers are pretty much used in many, many areas or fields uh, in our lives. Uh, we cannot uh, underestimate the role of computers in the world and is even getting you know, more complicated or is growing or is getting bigger uh, as far as how computers are used in our world. Now, so let's back down a little bit here. We're gonna try to understand parts of computers. Uh, that is, an, number one, I'm going to start with the input devices. What are those input devices, which are the keyboard, uh, the mouse, and uh, et cetera. Maybe it could be something like uh, maybe a, a microphone that also be an input device. So we're gonna take a look at that. And these are the devices that allows you to enter data into the computer or to input data into the computer. And that data could be in different forms. Data could be in the form of text, could be in the form of numbers, could be in the form of voice as I'm speaking um, to you right now. And uh, it can be in, in the form of images. All that is an input 
uh, that is known as data. And we use the keyboard or mouse or a microphone to do that. Uh, then there's an output device. Uh, the output device is like the monitor and the speakers and so forth, or it could be even the printer is another output device. At home, you have your own printer. I'm hoping maybe you have also some nice speakers hooked to your computer. That's great. And maybe you have a monitor as well. So we're gonna take a look uh, about these types of monitors. Sometimes you have a laptop, the monitor looks different. Sometimes you have a tablet or you have a desktop and the monitor also looks different. Of all that, there are output devices. What they, are present, what they present to you on the screen is known as an output. And then there's another very important part of computer known as a central processing unit. CPU looks like a very scary word, but uh, really this is the like the heart of the computer. Without the CPU, probably you don't have any working computer at all. So even your smartphone, which you love it and you use it every day, has a CPU. And uh, so that central processing unit is a critical part of the computer. So we're gonna just learn a little bit about the CPU, central processing unit, or the heart of the computer itself. Another part is called the motherboard. So the motherboard is a circuit board, and uh, this one connects all the computer parts, which we're gonna be talking today, but the motherboard connects all those parts together. So we're gonna take a look at that. Another area also I'm going to touch on is known as the cards or expansion cards. For example, you get the video card, that's why you can see video on your computer. There's a sound card, that's why you can play your favorite music uh, on your computer. And the network card, that's why you can connect you know, your computer to the internet. It's called the network interface card, NIC. So all those are called expansion cards. You need to have on a computer for that computer to, to work, okay? Another part is the hard drive. The hard drive, um, and that's where you store your files. That's where you store your documents, you store your music and so forth. And they are stored there for a long time until you decide to delete or to remove them. Where? In your hard drive, okay? The other connections uh, as far as the USB and firewire will cover those, but I won't like to start with those parts of the computer. All right, here we go. Parts of a computer, and I have some nice images here, very generic. Uh, this is the input device. So a mouse is an input device, keyboard, input device, microphone, input device, a scanner. If you have a scan at home, that's also an input device. A webcam, like the one I'm using right now, so that I can present uh, this lesson. Uh, my computer has a, an attached webcam. Other uh, computers have a built-in webcam, but these are examples of input devices. That means it allows you to enter data in terms of text, in terms of numbers, in terms of images, in terms of voice, where you can scan your documents and so forth. And all these are input devices. And probably there's even more, but we want to make sure we can just understand the basics, what we interact with each and every day, the input devices, okay? Gonna move on here. Output devices. So I want to focus now on the output devices. We started with input, now output. How is data presented to you? How is image presented to you uh, on the screen and so forth? That's output. So what are those? Here's the monitor. I got a big picture, nice picture here with a big monitor. And also, there's a laptop here also with a good screen. That's how data is presented to you. And there's a tablet here. This tablet also has a nice screen which could present whatever information you're looking at. And you have your favorite smartphone here also has a nice uh, screen. All those is part of the output device. It helps you see what is presented to you. Uh, and it could be an image, could be text, it could be a video and so forth monitor in different formats. Um, a printer also, if you have a printed home, 
and uh, maybe in your office or anywhere else, that's where you print out a hard copy of what is presented on the screen because on the screen is in a digital format. But if you want to have a hard copy, that's where you print out and then you have your hard copy of what has been presented from this unit. So that's another output device. And of course, my favorite are the speakers and headphones, especially when you like to enjoy your music and uh, maybe watching the video of your favorite uh, granddaughter, grandson presenting out there. That's the way to go. Um, you need to have those speakers connected to your computer. So a sample of output devices for your computer to work. Let's move on now to what I mentioned before, which is called a CPU, or I call it the heart of your computer, the central processing unit. And uh, it looks something like this, really. On every computer, it looks something like that. Uh, it's very flat and it has a, a number of chips, very kind of pointy, sharp, this, the way it's been built or designed. And uh, so the, the function that what CPU does is to interpret anything you do when you're using your keyboard or when I'm using a, a, a microphone or when I'm using a mouse, anything you do that CPU interprets what it means and it says, okay. So I think what you're pressing, if it's F1 or F2, or if you're pressing number T, it says, well, that's T, Roderick. So, and it shows you T because you key in T, okay? So that's the heart, the CPU, central processing unit. And uh, most of the time you will hear people talking about processor. So if you're thinking of buying a computer, and this is a very frequently asked question from community members. Hey, I'm thinking of buying a computer. What good questions should I ask? So, and that's a very valid question. One of the questions you want to find out is uh, what kind of CPU do you have on that particular computer? All right, you want to make sure that you have a big enough in terms of CPU capacity. And of course you want to know also the brand of the CPU you have. Generally, we have Intel or AMD and many other CPU brands, but these are very common ones, Intel and AMD. But remember, CPU is the heart of any computer. Without CPU, then that computer becomes just a normal plastic that sits there, doesn't know what to do because it cannot process, it cannot interpret uh, those commands that you are given uh, to the computer, okay? CPU, Central Processing Unit. And it looks something like that. How about memories? All right, that will be another question I would like to ask when I go to Best Buy or I go to any other place that I want to buy a computer, maybe it's online. First, I need to know the CPU and then about the memory. So memories here are in two parts. We have the RAM, R-A-R-A-M, RAM, and then R-O-M, RAM. It's kind of, you know, sounds very close to each other, but the difference here is A and O. So RAM and RAM. So let's start with R-A-M. R-A-M, it looks like this. It's inside your computers. It's flat and you kind of just slide it in there. But that's the temporary memory. It's a temporary memory. And that temporary memory, it says here, it's the main memory and allows you to temporarily store commands and data, very temporary. The bigger the RAM you have on your computer, the better. That means you can store more temporary memory. You can open more browsers, more files at once and your computer is going to run very nicely. But as soon as you start sensing your computer is running slow and slow and slow because you've opened so many files, then that is the RAM question that your memory is now getting smaller and smaller, very slim because you've opened so many files. But the bigger the RAM, that means you can open more files and your computer is going to run much better. Okay, so look for the bigger RAM, not the smallest one. 
And also, if you need more, maybe you have an existing computer at home and you need more RAM, you can add more RAM as well to, to, to give more power, more memory, temporary memory to your computer so your computer can run faster. So when you talk to a technician, they can tell you what type of RAM you need to add to your computer. Temporary memory. The second type of memory is ROM, so the RAM. RAM, it looks something like this. It's inside your computer. It is called a hard disk. It's a hard disk. And a hard disk is a permanent memory. That's where when you store something, files, your folders, your pictures, your music, and they're always there. They won't disappear. They're always there until you decide to delete them or to remove them. Even on your computer, maybe you have, you have a number of music files on your, I mean, on your um, smartphone, for example. Those music files on your smartphone, they are sitting on a permanent memory, RAM, on your smartphone. And that's why you can play over and over and over and over. They won't be lost until you delete them. RMO on any computer, it is a permanent memory. Sometimes they call it the hard disk, okay? So two types of memory, temporary memory, RAM, and permanent memory, RAM. Any question from here about, um, about memories on computers, permanent one or temporary one, or what questions to ask when I go to, when I'm looking for a computer? Oh, when my computer slows down, what does it mean? Do I need to in increase my RAM? Yes, that's one option. Or sometimes maybe you have so many files already collected on your computer, you may want to remove those files that are no longer needed, or maybe they're just temporary files, so you open up more space, so it doesn't really take space on your RAM. At the moment, no questions, but you actually answered the one I was going to ask you about. Okay. <laughs> about okay. storage space. So okay, that sounds perfect. good. All right, thanks. Okay, let's move on now. Uh, the, another part of computers called the motherboard. The motherboard. So again, the motherboard, simply, I'm going to put it in a very, very simple term. You know, we talked about, we talked about, um, CPU, central processing unit, which really kind of runs that entire, you know, intelligence of the computer itself. We talked about the, me the memories, both the temporary and the permanent memory. Good. We talked about that hard drive, and then probably we, there's a DVD drive and many other things. But all this, all this, they are connected. So how are they connected inside your computer? They're connected through the motherboard. So the motherboard connects all those pieces you have on your computer. That's why it's called the motherboard. It could be a smartphone. A smartphone also has a motherboard. And that motherboard connects all those tiny pieces called hardware that you need in order for your smartphone to work. So that's called the motherboard. And it looks just here is an example of motherboard connecting a number of pieces. Sometimes you're not quite sure what those pieces are, but they are connected in the motherboard, okay? All right, so that's another simple terminology. Now let's go to the cards. Remember I mentioned about cards before or the expansion cards? And here I have an, just a, an image of one of the cards, how it looks like. And uh, you need cards on your computer. You need a video card in order for you to be able to play video, okay? You need a network card in order for you to connect to the internet. You need a sound card in order for you also to hear sound, otherwise you won't be able to play anything with sound, all that. So all these are called expansion cards, especially on a desktop, it's easy to see that way, or even could be a laptop that way. And these are the parts on the computer. Now, here's a question. Network interface card, NIC card, this is for the internet. And somebody might say, well, how about Wi-Fi? Because uh, with the Wi-Fi thing, 
I mean, there is no, there's, I don't see anything connecting to it, but it's really uh, somehow my computer works or my laptop works for that case. It, it, even that Wi-Fi, it, it needs to have some kind of capability of a card, which has a built-in Wi-Fi receiver in order for that device to work. And that card is gonna be a network interface card, but with a Wi-Fi capability. If you don't have a Wi-Fi capability, then is the one that you still have to physically connect with a cable for the computer to work. Okay, so those are our expansion cards. I think I can stop here and see if there are any questions from the community members about um, some of those topics that we have covered so far today, very basic, step-by-step, -step, understanding your computer. So we are no longer too strange to the devices that we use at home and also in your offices and many other places, but at least understanding some terminologies and the functions. So uh, jumping back a bit onto the topic of memory. So I know there are people that may have heard when their, com the, their computer or their device runs out of memory mm -hmm. um, that they need to store on the cloud. Could we talk a little bit about that? Uh, yes, that's a very good question. Um, um, actually, the storage of documents or files or folders or could be um, images to the cloud is uh, a good option in case you don't want to save it to the permanent memory on your computer. So you have your computer and your computer has a permanent memory called a hard disk. And it can stay there, as I said, as long as you want. But if you keep everything on your computer for a number of years and months, definitely that memory is going to fill up very quickly. So one thing you can ease storage on your computer from your permanent memory is to store it to the cloud. So what does it mean to store it to the cloud? To store it to the cloud, it means maybe you are subscribing to, I'll say, um, uh, you have a Gmail account, you're subscribing to Google uh, Gmail. And if you have a Gmail account, also you have uh, access to what is known as a Google Drive. That's one example. So uh, once you have access to your Google Drive, now you can transfer uh, many of your files from your computer permanent memory to your Google Drive. And the Google Drive, which is known as the cloud because it's no longer, con it's no longer on your computer, is somewhere else, we don't know where, and that's what we call it, the cloud, but it's somewhere out there on somebody else's computer. Those computers are called servers. They're big computers with enough space for most of us to save our documents. So those computer servers, we call those cloud because we don't know where those computers are, but somehow they are, they are, they are, they are, uh, serving, they are they're serving us. We're able to connect to them and uh, transfer what we have on our computer to those servers, which we call clouds. So it's a good practice if you, if you decide to, to, to use that approach, you can easy um, access to those documents uh, to the cloud. And one of the benefits is you don't have to be in front of your computer each time you need to access any of the documents that are in the cloud because you just need any computer from anywhere. You go to the library and you have uh, a computer connected to the internet and you can access your cloud, your documents from the cloud, Google. Um, um, from the Google Drive. Other people have Microsoft, which is known as Office 365. Um, also, they have their storage um, mechanism or space for that case. So if you're using Office 365 and uh, that's an option for you, you can transfer also your documents from your computer uh, permanent memory to the Office 365 uh, where they have an uh, open you know, drive for users. And that's also called the cloud. The good news about using the cloud is the flexibility uh, in terms of accessing your document. You can access your document anywhere from any devices as long as the device is connected. That means you have the internet connection. If you don't have internet connection, you cannot access that at all. But as long as you're connected, you can use any device to access your documents on the cloud. Yeshua, 
helps a lot also with um, uh, recovery because your computer might crash. So if your computer crashes, um, the good, there's a good chance you might lose everything. But if you have your important documents, your favorite documents put somewhere to the cloud, maybe Google Drive, then that means that you're still gonna have access to those documents, although your computer is crushed. So it's a good thing to think about more of those benefits of uh, saving those important um, documents or what you deems to you like, I would like to make sure that I don't lose it. So you put it to the cloud and you can access it from any computer when even your computer crashes or has some issues or so. Answering that question. Uh, did it make any sense? Yes, that, that perfectly answered it. So it feels like uh, the cloud seems to be a very secure, very reliable place for additional memory if you need it. Yes. Is that what I'm yes. gathering? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Um, maybe uh, from my students, uh, Braden or Brandon, uh, is there anything you would like to add about uh, your experience with uh, any of this? Um, I actually was curious about RAM itself. So I've kind of recently gotten into like just personal, com like the personal, personal computer world. And I've always heard about bottlenecking. So having only one slot of DDR of RAM and it causes issues with computers. So like personally, I have two slots mm. of DDR RAM. So is that always necessary with all computers or it really just depends on how much you're running on that computer itself? Yes, it, it depends on how much you're using your computer. Uh, so it, it sounds like you're a heavy user of your computer. And especially if you're going to be running any video games, absolutely, you're going to have to boost that uh, memory because it's going to use a lot of your temporary memory in order to run uh, your games for that case. Uh, for those who are not heavy users, I think uh, the default RAM should uh, really uh, be um, enough for them. Uh, to for the computer to operate or perform the way it's expected. Uh, so one one reason would be how heavy you are with your computer. And I know for most young people, definitely video gamers, uh, you you need to use a lot of uh, memory uh, in order to boost your computer. Um, that's that would be my my number one reason for that. So not everybody will require that, but it depends on the usage. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have another question. Um, so you mentioned all of these different cards that are on computers. Mm -hmm. Do they all always come attached to a computer or are there some that you have to purchase additionally? Yes. By default, your computer should have the video card, should have the sound card, and also the other card I think I mentioned here. Let me go back. Network card. Okay. The network interface card. Because if you're using, if you're missing any of those, uh, then for the video card, you won't be able to view um, videos at all or play videos. No internet if there is no network interface card and the sound likewise. So those are default uh, uh, hardware or devices that needs to come with any computer. And if something goes wrong with any of these devices, then that means it's not working probably it needs to be replaced. If you are network interface card, some it may be uh, it kinda got damaged or something happened to it. No matter what, your computer won't be able to connect to the internet. That means it needs to be fixed. And once that is fixed, it should go back to normal. So yes, this is the default expectation of what you need to have on your computer. Uh, if you're missing any, then uh, you won't be able to hear sound or connect to the internet or even the video. And especially for the video, for the for the video games, yeah, big time you need this thing here, the video cards. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Brandon, do you have uh, any any input or like have maybe? I think uh, you covered most of okay. it. Okay. 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 Uh, uh, I think I can add more parts. Uh, we're talking about storage devices here for computer. We have talked about it before, but there are other parts that would be worthwhile mentioning. The hard disk, uh, I, this is the permanent memory we talked about. And then uh, of course, people are so much used to flash drive right, right now. And that's another type of uh, storage device. And um, the good thing about flash drives or sometimes we call those USB, drive, you know, universal serial buses. So 
the good thing about it is the portability. So you can move around with it in your pocket safely for that case, and you can plug it into another computer, and then you have access to the documents that you want to. So that's the plus thing for the flash drives. You can transfer documents from one computer to another computer very easily, unlike it. The drawback about flash drive is if it get damaged or if you lose it. So if you lose it, then that means everything in that flash drive is gone and there's no way of recovering it. And if it gets damaged, the same thing, that means you won't be able to access what is in the flash drive. So those are the only drawback. Otherwise, it comes with a, with a very uh, appealing you know, feature of uh, you know, being portable and flexible. The CD-ROMs, I guess uh, we still talk about CD-ROMs, I think, uh, nowadays, but uh, it's another storage device uh, for the CD-ROMs. You can burn you know, images and uh, documents into your CD-ROM. Um, and again, and, but uh, I know it's kind of phasing out. Some people are still using CD-ROMs and other people have completely forgotten about CD-ROMs. But yes, and now as you can see, it's called a CD-ROM. So it's a compact disk. And then this one again is permanent memory. So it's not a, it's not a, it's not a temporary memory. Once you buy it there, it's a permanent memory. And of course, with the DVD ROMs, also ROM, R-O-M, it is a permanent memory and the CD, uh, but this time is a DVD uh, ROM, storage devices. I guess, um, yeah, I think in my experience, I know we are kind of phasing out the CD you know, world right now, though we still have those around, not too much in demand at this time. Uh, we are still heavily using flash drive for sure, by default, we depend on hard disk for a computer for sure. DVDs are still there, uh, I think so. But again, uh, there's a lot more of, of what we have here online. So people really download, you know, the, the videos and many other things from online to their devices. Some storage devices on the computer. How about keyboards? Um, keyboards, uh, there's another input device. And uh, as you can see here, uh, it has a typewriter key for those who have used typewriters before. They should have be very comfortable with uh, this feature here. It's just pretty much the same. And then that is a window key right there. That's the window key. And uh, other function keys, like that's why they're called F1, F2, F3. Those are function keys. You press F1 and the window pops up is, is for help. So you can get some more help on your computer about any particular how to do with your computer. But also you can assign, you can assign on this function, you can assign what needs to be done when you use the function key. I can give an example. Maybe I'm running a grocery store and in my grocery store, when, when customers uh, check out the products, I need to run, you know, what they bought and uh, how much uh, they spent, and eventually including the tax. I can I can assign F8 to be the taxed key. So when when customers are checking out and I press F8, it includes the amount they've spent, also including the tax rate that is already fixed for that uh, for the state of Texas. So you can assign um, those um, those specific functions into the function key or it depends on whatever application you're using in Word or Excel. Also, they have specific functions. That's what they're called function keys. Um, and then uh, the enter key is always it's just right there, just like a typewriter, the enter key. Numeric key, but keypads right here. Uh, and now it all depends on what type of keyboard you have. So this is very generic though. And then we have the uh, cursor control key right there, up and down, left and right. And other keys, for example, here, I want to uh, delete or add page up, page down, and so forth. So just take your time to just familiarize yourself with your keyboard. You got it there. So why not take some time to familiarize yourself with the keyboard? If you want to have caps, here's a cap locks, and if you uh, if you engage this key, definitely uh, you're going to be type in capital letters for that case. 
And there's a shift key as well, which uh, if you press shift key, it allows you to, for example, if I press the shift key, and then I press also at the same time, this key here with a dollar sign and number four, if I press shift key and this key here, then a dollar sign will be presented on the screen instead of um, number four. But if I press number four by itself, that's key, number four is gonna be presented. If I press this key and the shift, the dollar sign will be presented. And that's how it works. Combination of um, you know, more than one key. So that's the keyboard, the input device. And uh, there's a lot more uh, into it. Play with it. Uh, you should be able to uh, uh, become more familiar with that. Any questions about um, any of that? We don't have any yet in the comments, but I know we do get a lot of patrons here at the library who are sometimes afraid. They see all of these buttons on the computer, on uh -huh. the keyboard. They're afraid to touch anything. They think it'll blow up. What do you have to say to those patrons? Um, the first thing is uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna damage the computer at all. Don't be afraid of using any of those keys. But uh, my my recommendation here will be to ask. If you have any question, and especially you are in the library and you're not quite sure about how even to use the keyboard, ask about um, um, are there any tutorials on how to use keyboard? And especially if they have uh, um, maybe a hard copy showing the image and the labels uh, on the keyboard, that would be very helpful. That here is the hard copy of the image of the keyboards and you can learn about the function of those uh, uh, keys. So ask, ask, and ask is always very beneficial once you, uh, you, you have a, a nice dialogue with the members in the library or even at home. It could be your son or your daughter is there and uh, you're not quite sure what to do with the keyboard. Don't be afraid but also just don't push any keys, uh, you know, you may probably you feel like it. Um, I like, I, I'm very proud of that courage, but also ask questions before you, uh, you, you know, you engage with any keys, especially if you're not sure about it, find out more about it and then go ahead and use it. Uh, there are tutorials online as well. So if you have access to any tutorials online that could be helpful for learning the keyboard, for that case, keyboard 101, that kind of thing. Why not uh, go and look for it? And that should be uh, good enough to you to give you a good orientation about the particular keyboard you have and how to use those keys. So do your homework first, take some time, and it usually pays off once you have done your homework. Yes, definitely. Thank you, Dr. Shao. And I know we do have lots of, uh, we have a desk staff upstairs with our public computers that are available. If you ever have any questions, they're always willing to, to help answer those. And we do have plenty of resources as well on our website. Excellent. Excellent. That sounds good. Um, Brandon, uh, let's say Brandon and uh, Braden, any, uh, is there anything you would like to, to add to what you have talked so far for our members? Um, I actually was curious about uh, talking about like SSD, solid state drive over mm -hmm. hard drive, because I know nowadays solid state's becoming a lot more popular solely because it's faster than hard drive, just because hard drive's starting to become a little bit more outdated. Yes, um, you're, you're right about it. You're about, yeah, so it's SSD, uh, solid state uh, drive, uh, they're becoming more popular right now. And um, I think the popularity of that is much, much faster for sure. Uh, the solid state, uh, but also it doesn't wear out easily. So the, the reason why we are now moving to solid state is even with the, with the old hard drive, uh, uh, you, you run those for a number of months or years and they start to wear out. Okay, and, uh, and that you find the quality of the storage uh, material deteriorate as well. So deterioration rate for the older model is faster than solid state. The solid state stays there for a longer time. So the quality and, and also um, retention of the material is much, much better. And the plus is much faster. So I think that's what is moving uh, the market right now. And um, probably you're gonna see more and more devices um, um, moving away from the old version. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Brandon? Uh, well, I don't have any questions for you at the moment. Okay, okay. Oh, maybe anything you would like to contribute um, 
to the community members? Um, yeah, just don't be afraid. Uh, just ask questions. Uh, mm -hmm. It's actually pretty easy once you get to the hang of it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, I definitely find that the more the more you use the computer, the more comfortable you get. So really, it just comes down to getting out there, trying things, asking questions and practicing, I think. Absolutely. It's very helpful. Computers are very intimidating. They are very intimidating. It's just maybe for the younger generation, they are so much used to it, you know, so they're not quite intimidated by this, uh, this, uh, you know, devices. But I know some other uh, generations, uh, this, this is quite intimidating. It's just beyond anybody's understanding and how it functions and how it's so fast. And so you kind of say like it's doing miracles in front of your face. So it's very intimidating. And I realize that. But uh, again, I think we can encourage ourselves, each one of us not to be intimidated uh, by the computers. There's always a very uh, curious questions I like to ask my students um, in their quizzes. And uh, it says, it goes like this, um, computers are smarter than human beings. True or false? Computers are smarter than human beings, true or false. So it's a very simple question, but it kind of gets you to think. It gets you to think, and when you think about it, some might say, oh, this is true. Those things are so smart, this is so true. But when you think about it, take time and think about it, no way, human beings are smarter than computers. Very, because we created those computers. So we're very smart, we created those computers. What the difference here is computers work faster than human beings. So the processing, the speed for computers is just, wow, I can't, I can't imagine it. Okay, and that's where that wow moment because of the processing cap capability, we think, man, these things are so smart. And we create it, we're smarter than computers, but the processing power of computers very fast than the processing power of our own brain. It takes some time for us to get there, but definitely we're very fast. So that's the main difference, just the processing power. Uh, the last one I had is about the mouse, which again is uh, one of those things that I can, I can testify that. It's one of the frequently asked questions when our member come to our class and they want to know about the mouse thing. Uh, and uh, again, uh, what I can say is one of that input device because it helps you input data and, and or uh, text or whatever uh, you how you want to interact with your computer or your smartphone or your tablet the mouse so it's definitely it's uh, it's shaped like a mouse i think that's why it's called a mouse and um, there are maybe three types so far of uh, uh, mouse device i've seen uh, and uh, there's a regular mouse, which looks something like this one here, close to that. But again, the, the regular mouse, the bottom of it is just a rubber. It's just a rubber in there. That's the only difference. Now, when you come to the trackball mouse, this is what they have. You can see here's the trackball mouse. So that's where the, the other one doesn't have the trackball by itself. This is the trackball mouse. And the third one is the optical mouse. The optical mouse doesn't use this uh, in a trackball, rather it uses light. So then the light is going to be at the bottom right there. And uh, that light detects the movement of your mouse, just like the, uh, just like the, uh, the roller. So that's the difference, whether you have the optical mouse or the trackball mouse, or it's just a regular one. Uh, either way, it should work for you. Nowadays, also, we have a wireless mouse that doesn't even have a wire in there, but it should pretty much work the same. The wireless mouse should have also on your computer some kind of a communication between you, the mouse itself, and the computer in order for that wireless mouse to work. So here we go. I can... Uh, right click and most of the time we end up right clicking and when you right click that's where you can select a text or you can select a space and start typing or select any any um select any object you want to you use the let's say go here, the right click but when you left click it kind of opens up more options for you to choose so if i decide to to left click then 
it's going to show me other options what else I want to do. So we want to make sure you're comfortable with those uh, buttons. The right click, the right button, and the, of course, the right, the left and the right button. So I think that's it I have for the mouse, which I think is uh, very simple enough. Don't be afraid of it. You're not gonna kill the mouse at all. It's very comfortable on your hands and you can right click or left click in order to um, accomplish what you want to do uh, with those two buttons. Sometimes also you can use the trackball. If you want to go with the trackball, you can use the trackball as well to do other things. Uh, depends on what application you're using. If it's Word or Excel, you can use the trackball. If I'm, I'm using my trackball here and I have my shift key down, I can zoom in and out of my document. So combination of that trackball and my shift key, uh, I'm just gonna press and hold it down. Then I can zoom in and out of any of my document or even the browser I'm looking at as you're using a mouse. So, it depends on how you want to use it, but there's a, a lot more applications you can use um, uh, a mouse with. And uh, from there, then uh, if there are any general questions about our lesson today. All right, so our comments still haven't come through, but thank okay. you so much, Dr. Shao and uh, students for tuning in and for helping us out today and teaching us a thing or two about uh, computers and computer basics. Uh, for those of you that weren't able to attend today, definitely keep an eye out on our website for our registration. All of the other classes, are uh, all of our registration links are ready to go. So we will be hosting these every few, um, I think it's every week this month. Um, yes. And you can, yes. And you can sign in, sign up, and you can actually attend the Zoom class and ask Dr. Shao the questions in person as we're casting live. So definitely keep an eye out for those links. And thank you again, Dr. Shao and students for, for participating in this today. And thank you very much for hosting us today. And I would like to give a chance to Braden and Braden also to say one or two words before we leave. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think the biggest uh, message to just basic computer information is just, yeah, not being afraid, just dive on into it, have a good time with it. I mean, I know personally, I wasn't familiar at all with computers. They scared the heck out of me um, until recently when I actually built my own computer. And I did that all off of tutorials off YouTube and and it's really not as hard as you think like it really isn't and once you kind of just play with it enough you you kind of kind of can just connect the pieces absolutely thank you thank you um and um brandon, I believe, are you there i believe brandon had to leave for class actually so thank okay. you for his okay. participation <laughs> all right thank you very much take care all right thank you bye-bye